untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black ninja deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Nashi Moon Sages Scion, a 3 mana 3 2 legendary rat ninja with ninjutsu for 4 mana, and whenever Nashi deals combat damage to a player, we get to exile the top card of each player's library, and until end of turn, we may play one of those cards, and if we cast a spell that way, we pay life equal to its mana value rather than pay its mana cost. So Nashi can be a very nice source of card advantage, as long as we can enable ninjutsu and maybe keep clearing a path for it with various spot removal spells. And that's exactly what we've done in this deck, where we have some cheap ninjutsu enablers with our two copies of Eye Twitch and our four copies of Okiba Reckoner Raid, a saga that will drain the opponent for one on the first two chapters gaining one life and eventually transforms into a 2-2 creature with a menace. So a great way to get in some damage and potentially ninjutsu either Nashi or the four copies of Biting Palm Ninja, a 3-3 creature ninjutsu for three mana and enters with a menace counter on it and when it deals combat damage to a player, we may remove a menace counter from it. If we do, we get to look at the opponent's hand and exile a non-land card from it, so very nice discard effect. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got plenty of spot removal to keep clearing a path for Nashi to hopefully pull ahead on card advantage, including two copies of March of a Wretched Sorrow, the new removal spell from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. As an additional cost to cast it, we may exile any number of black cards from our hand to make it two generic mana cheaper to cast, and then it deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker and we gain X life, so the life gain from March can help offset the life loss from Nashi's ability. And then March also combos very nicely with Duress, a card that can be dead in the late game as a discard effect to take away a non-creature non-land card from the opponent's hand for one mana. So in the late game we can simply pitch our Duress to our March of Wretched Sorrow to still get some benefit from it. And then Duress can also make sure the opponent doesn't have any instant speed removal to potentially mess up our ninjutsu play. Then at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Jadar, a 1-1 legendary human wizard that generates 2-2 decayed zombie tokens. Those are also good ninjutsu enablers, especially if the opponent doesn't have any large blocker out. We can simply ninjutsu getting rid of our zombie as we'll get a replacement end of turn. Then we also have two copies of Tainted Adversary, a 2-3 Death Touch Zombie, also a good ninjutsu enabler as the opponent is unlikely to want to block our Death Touch creature, and then later in the game we can sink additional mana into it, so it enters with more plus one counters, and will also generate decayed zombie tokens. Then we've got the full playset of Power Word Kill as our spot removal spell of choice at 2 mana, playing this over Infernal Grasp, even though of course there are quite a few powerful dragons in standard, so not being able to hit Goldspan Dragon is a disadvantage, but I'm going for Power Word Kill because we're already losing quite a bit of life off Nashi, so can't really afford more life loss from our spot removal. And then at 3 mana we also have two copies of Graveyard Trespasser, which also plays well with our ninja theme as a 3-3 creature with a day bound, so it will introduce the day and night cycle. And if we ninjutsu one of our creatures, it doesn't count as casting a spell, so we can potentially flip it to nighttime by still using one of our ninjutsu creatures and using our mana effectively. And then a Trespasser has Ward, making the opponent discard a card if they want to target it. And when the Trespasser enters a battlefield or attacks, we can exile up to one target card from a graveyard. And if a creature was exiled that way, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. So more incidental life gain to offset Nashi. And then when it transforms into Knight, it goes to Graveyard Glutton 4-4 with the same Ward ability. And now gets to exile two cards from graveyards as opposed to just one. And then at 4 mana we also have two copies of Sorin, which can generate a lifelinking 2-3 flying vampire tokens, another way to gain some more life, and can generate card advantage with the plus one. And then we also have two copies of Hagra Mauling, which we can play as a tap land or as an instant speed removal spell. And then at 5 mana, two copies of The Midnight Sky, a 5-5 legendary dragon spirit with flying and menace, that when it dies can either make the opponent discard two cards and lose two life, or we can put a non-dragon creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control and we lose two life. And then we also have two copies of Invoke Despair as another powerful curve topper, making the opponent sacrifice a creature, and if they cannot, they lose two life and we draw a card, and we get to repeat that process for enchantments and planeswalkers as well. 
And then a mana base has some additional goodies, including four copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant, turning into a 3-3 creature with Menace. We've got the Abandoned Mire, which can potentially get back a creature or Planeswalker from our graveyard. And then just one copy of Crawling Barons as a fifth creature land. The reason why we don't have a second copy is because of Invoke Despair. If we ever draw a second Crawling Barons, we won't be able to cast Invoke Despair on Curve. And then two copies of Agadim's Awakening, which can also be played as a land or as a sorcery, getting back a few creatures from our graveyard. And then we also need some sideboard lessons to grab with Eye Twitch, or potentially with Nashi if we hit a card from the opponent that lets us learn. So we've got Environmental Sciences to get a land, Necrotic Fumes and Introduction to Annihilation as removal, Prophecy for card draw, Anatomy to pump our creature, and then Mascot Exhibition as another curve topper, as well as Confront a Past to deal with opposing Planeswalkers, or maybe get back our Sorin. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand could be okay if the rest lines up in the matchup. Although we're probably up against a mono-white aggro variant is my guess. I'll still keep it. And then turn one Reckoner Raid can eventually set up our ninja. Alright, it's a black deck instead, Shambling Ghast, so the rest should have a target. Looks like a red-black Anvil deck. So Dispute and Anvil are both problematic cards. I think I'm supposed to take Anvil, but uh, the hope is that they don't play out Deadly Dispute next turn, so we can duress it as well. Ah, opponent keeps up Dispute. So I could play Ninja to maybe pressure the opponent into not casting Deadly Dispute because otherwise uh, we would be able to maybe connect more easily if they have fewer blockers. Or I can duress, make them cast Dispute and then potentially discard another Anvil if they draw that or who knows what else. And then we get to play an Eye Twitch. Seems okay. Opponent goes for Dispute. And the rest reveals Voltage Surge and another Anvil, which is probably the pick. Play Eye Twitch. And then next turn we can try Ninja to the Ninja, although Voltage Surge could potentially kill it at instant speed. Ooh, Nashi could be excellent. Alright, so... If I attack with Eye Twitch with a plan of ninjutsuing the ninja, opponent can use a treasure and sacrifice either a treasure or a blood token to kill the ninja with Voltage Surge. I could power word kill the Harvester and then just attack. See what happens. So that's maybe not a bad idea. Keep up the pressure, and then maybe they'll feel pressured into using Voltage Surge on one of my enablers instead of the payoffs. Alright. Now if they can also sack Shambling Gas, then finish off Eye Twitch, we lose our enabler, so that would be bad. But we can always cast our creatures for 3 mana. Opponent's gonna cycle with a blood token here. Finds another land. They also have two creature lands they can use, although March could be an answer to one of them. So I twitch attacks and then probably put in the ninja. Or I could keep up March for a creature land, although won't necessarily be able to kill Hive without pitching anything. 
Let's go for ninja. And we should probably have a look here. Ooh, a Metook Massacre is a nice hit. And yeah, that's one of the key cards that our deck is not playing, which is surprising for a black deck in standard. So, we'll see if they want to fire up a creature land here. It's gonna be a Voltage Surge to take out our ninja. Fair enough. So we'll play Eye Twitch. And then I could play Agadim untapped. So we can march the Den of the Bugbear, which they're more likely to activate than uh, the other creature lands. Although we do have to take three damage in the process. Alright, opponent's not gonna fire up anything. We'll take two, that's fine. And oof, deadly disputes. That's unfortunate. Kills Eye Twitch. Although we can learn for, let's say, Introduction to Prophecy. Pretty far from Mascot Exhibition. And another Epicure. And Shambling Geist. Okay, let's take our turn. Sorin's not bad. If I make a Life Linker, they're probably gonna fire a Hive of the Eye Tyrants. Which can then uh, finish off Sorin, but having a 2-3 Flying Life Link would at least hold these 1-1s one at bay. And then we can maybe try and connect with Nashi, or we can uh, Take a different approach. Keeping up March for a creature land would be nice. Think Sorin make a vampire still okay. You fight for me now. So Hive finishes off Sorin. Night Witch can enable Nashi, and then I can still potentially march, although not for enough to kill the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Maybe we'll Introduction first. Another Sword and End Invoke Despair, both pretty juicy, although we're missing the land for Invoke Despair. So it's probably a little ambitious to keep, but I'll keep a Sorin. And then next turn, I can maybe go for Nashi. Because, yeah, we would really like to potentially find another land. So we can Nashi and keep up March to answer a creature land on the way back. So Hive gets active. Could go for the double block, which is not terrible here. Since we have a backup Sorin. Although if they have Voltage Surge as a one card in hand, we could get punished. Although I imagine they would have just killed the Vampire before attacking if they did. Okay, so I could take a turn to hit the opponent with Nashi and uh, potentially get some card advantage going that way. Does mean taking a hit from all their 1-1s and the Den of the Bugbear on the way back, which is gonna hurt in addition to the life loss from Nashi. So maybe we should um, take a slightly safer approach, which could involve just keeping up March or going for Sword and make another Vampire. If they then fire up Den, I guess they could finish off Sorin once again, but then we trade for Den 
and then Nashi can go with the Eye Twitch. Definitely an interesting spot. I think Sorin Vampire is fine. And then Eye Twitch should probably attack if I'm not planning to block, but could see the advantage of uh, keeping it back to maybe force the opponent to overextend into this uh, attack. And then we can decide not to trade and just kill a 1 1 and gain some life instead. Because Eye Twitch could otherwise just trump the Den of the Bugbear as well. Right, Den is active. And your opponent sends everyone. So don't mind just killing an Epicure and letting Sorin go, keeping the Eye Twitch to enable Nashi. And then Lant now enables us to play March as well, to potentially kill the Den while Eye Twitch attacks, and Vampire probably hangs back for one more turn. Found a Deadly Dispute and a Reckoner Raid. Probably want Reckoner Raid here, unless we want Eye Twitch. And then Deadly Dispute, which still leaves us the treasure to cast March. Yeah, that's fine too. And we could learn for Confront to pass to get Soren back. Okay. So we'll pass it back, and then I can pitch maybe Jodar to March to kill Den. If that fires up. Bangbuster, Serpoint's gonna go with a value route. Nashi's unable to connect once again, but we've got our vampire token, can get back Sorin. So that's still good. Florian. Probably worth killing too, although I don't want to do it right now. Okay, so I can confront the past, get back Sorin, and then keep up March, I suppose. And then Vampire could attack. Question is what to do with Sorin, do we want to... Make another Vampire first, which seems reasonable with her opponent at 11. pass with March up, and then by pitching, let's say Jadar, I can kill Florian. If they fire up Den of the Bugbear, we can uh, maybe take a different approach, we'll see. Gotta watch out for another Meatook Massacre. Don't have any creature lands ourselves to keep up the pressure. But uh, an adversary could come down and make a few decayed tokens. Alright, opponent still fires up then. And then have to decide if we want to go for Florian or Den. I think Florian is still the bigger target here. And then I can trade for Den of the Bugbear. Okay, so we've got two goblins, a Den and a Florian going at Sorin. 
So if I march for x equals 3, pitching Jadar, kill Florian, and then Nashi, who is unlikely to do anything for us, can trade for Den, gain some life, keep Soren. Seems good. Opponent's got a backup Den, which we can now power word kill. Don't think I want to ninjutsu the Biting Palm, but we can just cast it. And then Reckoner Raid, keep a Power Ward kill, seems good. Still have our adversary as a leftover. Opponent goes after Sorin. So this kind of points towards a potential Meat Hook Massacre. So I want to save Sorin by using Power Ward Kill on a creature here. And then we'll still have a Sorin in play, which seems important after a Sweeper. So we can block here. And Power Ward Kill with a Goblin. There's a Meat Hook Massacre, as expected. Alright, so the game's not over yet. Opponent gets to gain some life. Back up to 7. Another march I'll happily reveal. And then I can play Adversary. And... Uh, Pay the extra 3 mana once. So we're presenting lethal for next turn. Although the Bankbuster can make a token, I guess we can kill the token. Probably want to kill it right now before they get to untap and potentially crew the Bankbuster. And then Adversary could either trade for Bangbuster or block Den if that attacks. If that means saving Sorin, but we'll see. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough, so what a grindy game this has been. Glad we were able to snipe those early anvils with duress, otherwise this game would have looked a lot different. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn 1 Eye Twitch. Might end up playing Mauling as a tap land. Against the enchantment deck, Power Ward Kill has a lot of targets it wants to take out. Between Naturalist, Visitor, and of course Runeforge Champion. And yeah, opponent's got a good start. I think we're gonna wait for the opponent to play out a rune to try and kill their Naturalist in response. Especially now with a second power ward kill. Another visitor. And we'll see if they play a rune out. I'll take four. Opponent passes. In which case... Probably fine going for Power Ward Kill on the 2 2 Visitor. And then I think we still keep up instant speed removal here. This turn Power Ward Kill, next turn Hagra Mauling. Wait for them to commit. Alright, there we go. 
So this will also deny the card draw. Yeah, I had a feeling my opponent was holding a rune, but they just didn't want to play it into open mana. But after showing them the first power ward kill, they felt comfortable running out the rune. And then probably still take two. Keep Eye Twitch as a ninjutsu enabler. Okay, so I can keep a Pagra mauling. Try and strand them without creatures. Another rune we can punish. So yeah, instant speed removal is kind of the answer to the rune deck for the most part. And then now we can start running out our threats. Maybe starting with Sorin draw a card to try and hit land 5. And now we've got another removal spell lined up with Invoke Despair. Alright, Runeforge Champion with Haste could come down now. But we've got an answer lined up. Goes after Sorin. Happy to keep plussing. And we'll invoke despair. Nothing on Innistra is free. Okay, and then yeah, probably worth it to keep Eye Twitch on defense in case of another hasty champion. Opponent passes, the rest could have a look, maybe they've got a showdown they're unable to cast. Still find plusing to try and hit more lanes. So let's have a look. And yep, there's Showdown as expected. And then Midnight Sky here would apply the most pressure. Although Candle Trap, I guess, means playing anything else would have been better. Keep plussing. And can play Adversary, sink a bunch of mana into it. Could try and double spell Trespasser. Yeah, keeping up March is probably the safest play. So we can punish another uh, Rune of Speed here. Start exiling some creatures to drain them. And then I could play a Ninja and still keep up March. Reign of Truth, not too impactful here. Could also kill my own Midnight Sky at some point, just so we can get the death trigger, but uh, yeah, that worked out. Lots of removal is the answer to the runes deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Reckon Raid into Jadar. And then we're hoping to pick up some ninjutsu creatures. If we're up against mono green, it's not our favorite matchup since they've got some large creatures. Chariot is also kind of annoying to deal with. Which is why we want to try and make the opponent discard. Ranger class also good against removal. But we did draw Nashi, which could come in handy. Going for Adversary also reasonable, since it lines up better against the Wolf. But Jadar makes it more likely that we can set up Ninjutsu, I think. It's gonna be Inscription fighting Jadar. That works. And we'll take two. So we're probably going to hang on to Nashi as a ninjutsu card, because playing it out means the opponent can just play a random creature or even a chariot, and then Nashi's never going to get to connect. So 
I think I keep a Power Word Kill over playing Adversary, which could be a nice turn 5 play. And then hope not to see Chariots. Four mana. Bone is going to level up Ranger class. Alright, that works. Wolf attacks. Probably fine to take three. Keep the power word kill for something else. Like a pack leader. Alright, Duress is kind of tempting, not gonna lie. Being able to maybe snipe a Planeswalker. Or the uh, five-man enchantment, for all we know. But I think I should go for Nashi while we have the opportunity. And then probably pick up the Decayed Zombie. Alright, Prowler works. And probably want to make our creatures cheaper. Although keeping the creature in the graveyard could be good if we draw Trespasser to drain the opponent. Right, it's going to be an oddity. That's fine. Opponent attacks, can hit us for 8. So we'll get to connect with Nashi once again. And we've got a Death Toucher as a good blocker coming up. So, can attack with the team first. Don't think I need to keep anything else back. And sure, we'll exile the Abundance here. Nashi finds Pack Leader for one. And then can go Adversary, make Decayed Zombies and still Duress. Could go Sorin and still Duress. I guess we should start with Duress to know what we're gonna face next turn. Defensive Temple, Augur and Toski. Right, so nothing too scary. Think Adversary. Probably gonna be the better option here. So now we can just go wide to finish off our opponents. And yeah, Nashi put in some good work. Opponent attacks. Counter goes on the Trampler. I could block Adversary and Prowler on Oddity, jump the Wolf token, and then I think we still have enough to kill them on the way back. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, keeping a fine hand. Some early threats, followed by some removal. Let's see what we're up against. Black White with an early Shambling Ghast. Okay, probably gonna play this tapped. So Jadar doesn't line up great against an early Ghast, so might wanna go with Adversary first. Now, if this is a token sacrifice deck, we're probably in for a rough time, as uh, our deck doesn't have any sweepers, so one for one spot removal is probably not gonna line up all that well. And yep, yeah, there's the wedding announcement, a card we did not want to see. Okay, let's see if we can maybe sneak in a ninja here. Opponent takes it, so ninjutsu works out. And 
And our opponents got a stacked hand featuring Sorin, the Wandering Emperor, and Right of Oblivion. Then if we can successfully fight through a pair of Planeswalkers, although March at least targets Planeswalkers as well. Kind of like the idea of exiling Right of Oblivion, which they can also flash back, so we get rid of both halves basically. Opponent's gonna main phase Emperor to exile Ninja, most likely. And announcement will draw a card. Alright, now what? I could finish off Wandering Emperor, but that leaves me without an answer for Sorin, which is arguably more problematic. Could go for Jadar plus Adversary to make a few different threats. Or we could save Adversary to play it to make some more zombies alongside it. Hmm, tough choice. Getting the Hive in play could also help pressure Planeswalkers. So what if we just play a tapped Hive and pass with Power Word Kill to maybe kill a Vampire token and then we can fire up Hive next turn? Yeah, I guess we'll try that. They could also just start plussing with uh, Sorin, of course. Remember your training. Opponent does have a field of ruin, which could go after Hive. Uh, there's Sorin. And it's going to minus. Okay, wedding announcement draws a card. So let's kill Vampire and then fire up Hive next turn. Alternatively, I could march for two killing Emperor and then Hive can finish off their uh, Planeswalker still, leaving them without any Planeswalkers, although then we're taking a pretty sizable hit. Hmm. Maybe that's still the play. Until next time, then. All right, two planeswalkers down, but our opponent's got a full grip still, and we're pretty far behind on board. Alrighty, so if I play Adversary, it likely gets removed. Could go for Jadar and double power word kill. That seems better. And that can maybe help us enable Nashi next turn as well if they don't kill it right away. Nothing end of turn. And then we'll let them attack. Kill Vampire. Might see a deadly dispute. Fair enough. In response, might want to kill the token as well. In case they draw into another deadly dispute with the original one. Looks like they just had two deadly disputes to begin with. Alright, fair enough. Well, now they've got a bunch of treasure and a lot of cards in hand. So if they play something like Spider Queen, we still won't necessarily be able to ninjutsu here. It's gonna be another announcement, which will draw a card and a Shambling Ghast.
Okay, Midnight Sky likely getting exiled, so it wouldn't provide any value. So I probably just attack with both, so I can Ninjutsu Nashi. If I just attack with a zombie, there's a small chance they just take it. But if they block with Shambling Gas, they finish off Jadar anyway. Now they'll block Jadar, but that's fine. And we just hit two lanes. Alright, that's too bad. So this one did not go our way, but I think this is a very difficult matchup to begin with. Just a card wedding announcement provides so many tokens and card advantage that uh, it's difficult to keep up if you don't have a board wipe. So you can't win them all. But uh, yeah, still managed to clear the early planeswalkers at least. Abandon Meyer can get back. A Planeswalker potentially goes for Sorin. So we don't have any good attacks. Can play Midnight Sky, but very likely gets exiled. Cern finds Seed of the Empire, which can combine with a Vampire to take out Midnight Sky if they don't have another answer. And her opponent goes all out, so probably Meat Hook Massacre to clear the board. Something like this looks fine. And then they still have Field of Ruin to answer my creature lanes. I guess we'll make the opponent discard too, but... It's not gonna make a huge difference. And yep, there's uh, another land off the top. So you can activate Hive. And then still have some mana left over for Crawling Barons. Opponent uses Field of Ruin, so now I can actually float my mana to animate another creature land, but thanks to the treasures they can still Field of Ruin or use the Seat. So, not going to be too helpful. But I guess we can force the issue here. So they might have wanted to wait until we attacked. So Field of Ruin number two. And then uh, Sorin making a token should be enough to close out the game next turn. Opponent's got uh, Edgar as well. Agadim. Okay, actually not a bad draw, although unlikely to save me. Can play it for five. And that should be game. Opponent finally finds an Exile effect with Rite of Oblivion, which can cleanly deal with the Midnight Sky. So yeah, the combo of tokens plus Exile effects is a little bit too much for us to handle. But our opponent's not even gonna cast it, as the Meat Hook Massacre can still drain us to death here. Alright, so we'll take the damage, good game. So yeah, black-white tokens and sacrifice decks in general, not the matchups we want to be facing with this mono-black deck, 
but that's going to be the case for almost any deck in standard where you will eventually run into some bad matchups. We'll get to hit some cool cards with Nashi along the way, so that was the goal. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.